I have questions, and today my questions are very serious questions. It's because I'll be talking to a woman who is a well-known economist, and she's also a member, or rather the head, of uh, one of the think tanks for the government. Basically, the gist is, whatever she says, the government listens to. So obviously, she's a very important person. I'm talking about Dr. Mahani Zainal Abidin. My name is Said Fadino Omar, and you're watching In Person. Now, we've managed to catch up with Dr. Mahani on a weekend, and she said we'll have a barbecue, but as you can see, it's raining, so a barbecue outside is not really going to happen. So we're going to go inside and catch up with her cooking. And from where I'm standing, the food smells fantastic. So if you come with me. Hello, Dumani. Thank you very much. Hi, Dino. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us in your house. Yeah, no, it's I wish I can. I wish I can stop the interview right now and just dive into the food. Well, I know <laughs> I you didn't have breakfast, but we have to wait. Yeah, I think, yeah. So tell us what's going on right now. Okay, this is a family barbecue. Okay. So, you know, quite often, you know, I would, my sisters and my, my brothers and I and their children, mm -hmm. we all come together and we love to have barbecue. Uh -huh. And we have Korean barbecue okay. as well as... Uh, and as well as outside. something else outside. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and these are the, the children who are doing it. And some of them, they make their own cakes, for example. I see. And all these things. I so, see. These are my, so, it's got... Uh, for example... Got an eclectic uh, mix of everything yeah. here. So, uh, this is the cake uh -huh. uh, my niece bought. Oh, I, she's somewhere there. So she's <laughs> I think, cooking. yeah, the, the house is full of people. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to see it as we move along. But, okay, shall we dive into um, yes. some food? and then? Can I offer you something? This is uh, prawns. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is my uh, one of my favourite chicken with uh, wasabi mayonnaise. Oh, okay, we'll try uh, that. Uh, that's vegetable for you to be healthy. <laughs> uh, and that's lamb. Okay, why well, don't you join me? Why well, don't you yes. grab some food as well? And yes. then we can continue talking. Yes. Um, what surprises me is you actually have time to have something like this because I thought somebody as important as you wouldn't have any time at all. You'd be working, 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 making decisions crucial for the country and all. This is my only hobby, okay. having a, something to eat mm -hmm. and barbecue is actually quite easy. Okay. It doesn't take much time. Mm -hmm. So this And is it's fun for everyone. Yeah, it's course. fun for everyone and this is something that is, I can manage, you know, barbecue. I see. A proper sit-down meal would be very uh, would high take for me. much more effort there. Yes, yes. Okay, now, let's go straight into it. Yeah. The gist of it is, as I mentioned during the opening earlier, yes. was that the work that you do, mm -hmm. what you say, the government listens to. How does that work? Uh, what we what we did was we always look what's happening in the country and mm -hmm. outside the country, mm -hmm. and trying to match these two development mm -hmm. and what is the implication of Malaysia, mm -hmm. and then we thought about it and then we then submit to the government our mm -hmm. views and based on what we know, the people we meet, the things that we share. Mm -hmm. So uh, and this what we are trying to provide for the government is the alternative view. Okay. Uh, for example, the government has its own sources, the government has its own view, but we feel that any country should have an alternative view. Mm -hmm. and this is the role of a think tank. Mm -hmm. uh, and we hope we, we have done that role. So the alternative being uh, the point of view of a non-governmental organisation? Yes. Okay. We are, because we, we have get the input from mm -hmm. some come and have a say. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll uh, jump yeah. over there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th that view we have from different... Uh, Sources. Okay. We meet with different people, foreigners, Malaysians, young people, you know, middle-aged professors. So, uh, uh, accumulation of all sorts of opinion. Mm -hmm. So we thought, in that sense, we open up the discussion, the point of view mm -hmm. uh, to these other people, so mm -hmm. that at least the government can get other point of view. Mm -hmm. yeah. So take me through the process, uh, or rather, you know, how does it work um, mechanically? I mean, uh, you gather a group of people who share an opinion about something and you discuss it and you present your findings to the government. Is that how it works? One of them. Okay. Okay, that's one of the route. Mm -hmm. The other route is we do our own study. Mm -hmm. uh, the other route is we sometimes uh, participate in other uh, conferences outside mm -hmm. that we get ideas. So there are different routes, but one of them is the main one is the one that you described. But our uh, interaction mm -hmm. with when we join these conferences, or meet with other people, other institution outside, is another important source of ideas for us. Okay, and um, ISIS, which is uh, the body that you're uh, spearheading, uh, which is actually um, the Institute of uh, Strategic and International Studies, um, what sort of input does it give to the government? I mean, in what 
um, angle and what focus is? Our main aim is actually we are we look at issues that affect national interests. Okay. And for us, the aim is to build a strong nation, a prosperous nation. Mm -hmm. So we look at from that angle. Mm -hmm. So um, the input we want to give is that to help the nation. So it is for the country. So sometimes the views that we can give is a bit um, uh, contrary to probably some existing views. So okay. we are quite prepared to, to give that kind of mm -hmm. view. So when you say alternative, you actually really mean alternative point of view. So you're not scared actually to go against the grain and say what things are as how you see it. Yes. But at the same time, I think we should not also take it as that uh, a research institute always have to criticize. Oh, the of course, yes, yes, yes. So we sometimes we support, sometimes we are a bit more critical, depending on mm -hmm. the situation, on the issue. Yes. Okay. Now, okay, we've understood how it works. Now let's take a step back. Um, I suppose the the most logical question is to ask you whether if economy, economics, and policy making, and 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 all and international trade, all this. Has it always been your choice um, from the very beginning? Well, strangely, I was trained as a statistician. Okay. I know it's not oh, boring. Okay. <laughs> well, I did my first degree was a, uh, a double major. Okay. I did statistics and economics, mm -hmm. and I did my masters is actually in statistics. Mm -hmm. So when I did that, I realized the subject of statistics is too difficult. Okay. So then I switched to economics, and then I thought. Uh, in trade and, and development economy is something interesting mm -hmm. I rather than the theoretical economy. So mm -hmm. from the very beginning I did that and I was very lucky. I was working with a Professor Muhammad Arif. He was my boss okay. and he is the one who introduced me to international trade. Oh, okay. uh, so right. from then on I find the subject is interesting. Uh -huh. So uh, I decided that uh, I have to concentrate and yeah. I And you pursued it and, and you yeah. actually went all the way. You went uh, 1992, I believe, at yeah. London School of Economics and you did your um, your uh, PhD there, yeah. uh, am, am I right? Yeah. And then after that you had some professorial posts. Yes, um, University of Malaya. Yeah, uh, locally. Mm -hmm. Now, um, through all that, um, was that how, was that what you used as a platform to actually get out of academia and into actual, you know, thought process thinking making and you know thought uh, presentation okay what i what i did before was i was in the university mm -hmm. i was teaching i was participating in conferences of course i was giving ideas but i guess it was at a different level but the crisis was actually the uh, watershed event for me mm -hmm. because i was invited uh, by tunda aim to mm -hmm. join him uh, in the NEAC. Yep. So that gave me an opportunity to pass. And that was yes. smack bang in the middle of right. uh, the, um, uh, the economic crisis. Yes, so yes. what was the biggest challenge there? Okay. Uh, I always uh, remember those circumstances very well. I was a development economist, a trade economist. Okay. And the crisis is about financial matters. Yeah. So on the first day of the meeting, I was chaired by Tunda Aim and I was one of the working group. Uh -huh. I felt so inadequate. I felt like I was thrown in at the deep end of the pool and I have to swim because mm -hmm. the subject matter was totally different. So it was really a very steep learning curve for me mm -hmm. uh, to broaden my area from trade to actually uh, more macroeconomic. Mm -hmm. So you actually had to do what everybody else who doesn't understand the issue well enough does, take a step back and look at it from a bigger picture point of view. So did you have to go back in there and? and come up with you know, feasible solutions on a more micro level? Or did you keep your involvement macro? Both. I think uh, because the crisis affects people on the ground, the ordinary people, the solution has to be micro. Mm -hmm. So I have to take a, use a different head mm -hmm. to become a, a, you know, a, a lay person, to, give, yeah. to think of ordinary solution. Mm -hmm. I cannot be an academic anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, the crisis also required a macro solution. Mm -hmm. So it was both. So you, to me, it was uh, something of a challenge, uh, opening this new horizon. But I, I thought it's a very unforgettable unfor time for me mm -hmm. uh, to learn and to see how macroeconomic policy affects people. OK. Yeah. And now that you've uh, mentioned um, affecting people, let's take a look at the fact that, you know, Back in 1997, you know, everybody went through this economic crisis, and today we're still going through a, a different economic crisis. 
do you think the experiences from back then could be applied to solve the problems of today? Uh, most of it, but mm -hmm. not all of it. Okay. Uh, b because the crisis is different mm -hmm. from 98 to now. But how people respond, particularly how to maintain confidence, uh, the impact on people, the fear of people, is about the same. Okay. And some of the measures can be just about the same, like yeah. uh, inflating the domestic economy. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the same. So we learn from the crisis how to do things, what are the things to look at. So mm -hmm. that was very valuable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we're, we're talking very, very serious issues here, but I find it very hard to concentrate because I can smell the wonderful <laughs> food coming from... Can we like uh, yes, hop over me... there and grab something yeah, else okay, as well? Everybody should recognize the face. Come on, if the camera can look at the face, okay, this is the face you should be looking at to go and get something Ms. like that. Pavlova, then. you can order from her. show you uh, beside, beside the inside mm. we also have the outside here we have chicken uh -huh. chicken drum drumlets or something uh -huh. and uh, and squid, squid calamaris yeah i have uh, my nephews to help me you've got so, you know an entire army of chefs no. These are <laughs> unpaid labour. <laughs> so please try maybe, this. Maybe that's the maybe that's the solution we need for the economic crisis. Unpaid labour. Get yes. more people to work for free and get things done. Young people. Yes. Yeah. So I, I love to use uh, curry leaves in, oh, okay. in my... Uh, like the mama shop. Like the mama shop. shop. Like okay. the mama shop. That's something that everybody can relate to. <laughs> okay. Where shall we sit next? Uh, uh, you can, we can sit over here. Um, oh, okay, or maybe we can, we can just go yeah, back to... Um, you can go back here. Yeah. We've got the fan here, so yes. I think that works well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, um, now, coming back to what we're talking about, let's talk about today. Oh my God, I did not notice oh. that that's a cake. You, you, that's... You, you must... Uh, this is my niece. Uh -huh. She made this pavlova. Uh, right, uh, yes. Farah, I will call her because she's the <laughs> chef. Come over here. She's the person who made this wonderful cake. So that's a strawberry and blackberry, blueberry pavlova. Blueberry pavlova. This is Farah. She is a good cook. And she also make this cupcake. Oh wow! So if okay. you want to order, yeah. she will. Yeah. So everybody yeah. should everybody should recognize the face. Come on, if the camera can look at the face, okay, this is the face you should be looking at to go but and get something like that. Pavlova, then. you can order from her. So this is wonderful. You Farah, must try this. you're so lucky because you've got an auntie who knows everything about yeah, economy, so she can you know she can tell you what to do and what yeah. not to do for the business. Uh -huh. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna try that later, Farah. Okay. Thank you so okay, much. All right, Farah. Okay, <laughs> okay Dr. Mani, coming back to what we're talking about now. Let's focus on uh, the problems of today. Okay, uh, We all know that the economic crisis is impending and it's coming towards us. What are the key areas that the government, okay, let's start with the government, should be focusing on? Uh, the main issue is the government must encourage people to spend, encourage business to invest, mm -hmm. to keep the economic activity rolling. Uh, and for that, the government has done some. For example, for business, the guarantee is supposed to allow to facilitate mm -hmm. companies to take up loans. Mm -hmm. But I think the government also need to give incentive for people to spend. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are a lot of wealth in Malaysia, mm -hmm. in certain group, mm -hmm. that can be spent in order to generate economic activity. But I suppose the problem is, it's pure mentality. We are Asians, we know that if we, you know, sedia kampanis belum hujan, to prepare for a hardship, you should save rather than spend. So that's a very Asian mentality. How do you change that to suit what is needed for uh, you know, ha handling the economic crisis? Okay, maybe what we can do is we can actually encourage Malaysians, which mm -hmm. is Asian, to spend in order to enhance their saving. For example, buying property, mm -hmm. not just spending for just food and clothes, mm -hmm. but to spend as an investment. So in the sense that they say, oh, this is my spending now, this is investment, mm -hmm. that I will reap the benefit in the future. Mm -hmm. So we have to think of ways to encourage people to spend as a form so of investment. The solution is actually very micro. Yes. It's very individualistic and it's not something that requires great action from up above, but from the grassroots below. Yes. Okay. So what are the challenges in relaying that message out to the people? Oh, one thing we realised from 98 and now, mm -hmm. communication is very important. Okay. Uh, information is very important because mm -hmm. people want to know what the government has done, whether it's reaching the people on the ground. Okay. So if people know that it's reaching 
people on the ground, people say, yes, there is economic activity. Mm -hmm. I can see uh, what's happening in the future. So actually managing confidence is very important now mm -hmm. in order to tell people, look, we are doing something for the economy and we think this is one that is going to work. We're mm -hmm. going to get value for your, for your money and everything. So it is very important, the role of the media, including both electronic and newspaper, mm -hmm. to tell people, yes, we are we have to do it together and everybody outside there is also doing something mm -hmm. so it's not just gloom in this picture yeah. uh, in this time you know we yeah. also must tell people we are doing something mm -hmm. okay now what about market volatility mm -hmm. um, what can be done from your point of view to keep volatility low so that the people can actually feel that they are standing on solid ground because sometimes even if the, the ground is solid people don't know it so you know it's again it's a problem of communication as you said just now what needs to be done to keep volatility low? Oh, some of the volatility, it is external. Mm -hmm. It is also quite difficult. But oh, for example, the exchange rate, mm -hmm. uh, the government has a big role to play there mm -hmm. in order to assist uh, through either confidence and through other measures to keep that volatility low. Mm -hmm. The same thing with, with the stock market. You know, in the, during the crisis at one time, the government introduced some drastic measure to provide a cushion. Uh, and this is what the government has done with the value cap. So there are measures to uh, reduce that volatility. But I think if people also uh, realize that sometimes this volatility is just a short term. Mm -hmm. uh, in the long term, it will be quite all right. But here, many of the roles that can be played if people don't panic. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you see the thing volatile, yeah. if you also react to it, you make it worse. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if the market is down, you don't sell. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you can, if you can hold on. So in not reacting too drastically to the volatility will help. Mm -hmm. Now, and then uh, coming back to what you said about communication, I, I feel like I'm the only one eating here. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. I will eat. Because once I start eating, I will uh, forget will about you. <laughs> okay. Um, now, coming back to communication, yeah, um, a lot of people out there right now are being prophets of doom. Okay, how do we change that so that they become soothsayers of hope instead? People are scared. Every the problem right now is with perception. How do we change that? And I'm sure you've done research and and, and study groups into this. So tell us what you know about this. Okay, bad news sells newspapers. Yes. And sells okay. News. But I think what we should be is we should give credible news, what's happening. But I think as long as the government or whoever can give a solution mm -hmm. and saying that this is what can we do, what we can do, mm -hmm. I think people can have at least confidence. If we only just tell bad news without offering a solution and that's where the confidence will go. So I think it is quite important to monitor the measures that has been introduced, the progress that has been made, and to react quickly if, let's say, for example, a certain sector, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is uh, being impacted so badly. So the government must narrow down and do the, the measures, the re remedial measure, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think what people want is actually credible news. Sometimes, even though if the news is all good. If it's not credible, people don't believe. Yes, of course. The most important is that if people believe the government